Hey guys, we're catching and cooking walleye this time. You're gonna to have to go back to the start and find out how we caught these walleye. We're cooking them in hot oil and we're gonna make ourselves a courier de bois meal fit for an early fur trader. Join me, I'm in Woodland Caribou Provincial Park and we're catching and cooking walleye. Stick around. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on this video. I gotta thank my sponsor for today. It's the Ridge. They want us to ditch our bulky wallets and grab a Ridge. The Ridge is an everyday carry. It's a compact alternative to a bulky wallet. As you can see, I've got all my cards in here. On the back, I have a money clip. To get the cards out, all you do is push on the bottom. There's a little ridge there. And then fan the cards out by pulling on the bottom. And then you can grab the card that you want, the Ridge. These come in aluminum, titanium, and the lightest, carbon fiber. These come with a lifetime warranty, and on any orders over $40, they'll ship for free, worldwide. I checked some of the reviews online, and the people that have these and own these love them. Guys, it's time to ditch this wallet. Best in a ridge. Good morning, guys. It's a uh, second day here in the park, Woodland Caribou French Park. Cool morning. Cool morning this morning. Very quiet, though. We're on an island on Rist Lake, W-R-I-S-T, Rist. We are headed north today. We're gonna to go through a string of river, creek systems into a lake we're gonna kinda of blow through. We might fish it a little bit on the way through and we're headed to another lake trout lake where we're gonna spend two days. So we've got everything packed up real quick. We might grab a snack to eat Jeremy's already packed out. He's uh, getting himself a warm breakfast. I'm just gonna have a cold breakfast. And we have quite a bit of work to do. We have an 800 meter portage, but that's double carry. Um, so you multiply that by three. There, back, and there. And we're not accustomed to doing this. Jeremy and I, we've not done a provincial park portage trip. We do lots of just put in and, and stay, but we've done a double carry on a 1.5 <clears throat> to one lake. So we should be fine and we have you know all the time in the world to do it, but we don't want to spend all the time in the world doing it. Um, but yeah, we're not gonna rush, and uh, but we're not gonna take our time either because we like to get going and doing other things. So anyway, we're gonna load up Paddle out, walk, walk, walk. So here's the here's the work that the courier de bois used to do as they ran through the woods. Oh, that was a false alarm, maybe. Oh, there you got an alarm call now. Getting close. Yeah, says the mother bird. This um Nikonik hides the nest really well. Oh, right here. Four eggs. Yeah, we can be having some eggs for breakfast, I suppose. We were really hungry and we couldn't catch a lake trout. Yeah. So if we were really hungry and we had no arms and no legs? <laughs> yeah. We were really bad fishermen. We'd have to eat eggs for breakfast. I'm sure that would have been tempting to some people <laughs> back in the time without any scruples. I haven't had eggs in a while. Your Fitbit in that scene was a nice touch. Oh yeah, did it show? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a nice squared, technologically advanced watch. It's gonna give us all our stats on this trip. You're interested in calorie burning? Yeah, how I've been sleeping. I'll be interested to see how many calories we burned on the drive here, compared to uh, how many calories we burned while we're actually out here. It's probably a significant amount. Mm -hmm. Especially with today's portaging. Yeah. Not portaging. No. French. Well, all of our travel days have a lot of portages, right? <laughs> uh, not everyone, but 
it'll be a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Oatmeal. Yep. Breakfast of champions. I'm just having uh, dry cereal and some nuts, probably, and whatever else I can find. We got little snack foods here, trail mix and things of that nature. Found these cool things. These are from uh, Dollarama. It's like probably your Dollar Tree. The U.S. would have this. Two bucks. And I did the math on that. That's 1,300 calories. So you'd need two of these a day. You could live off that. We'd like to do just fish and rice one time. That would be an interesting challenge because then you'd have your carbs and your proteins and fats. If you ate the eyes and the brain, the swim bladder and the skin, you might be you might be just fine doing that. Hey, right, we're finally all packed up, all eaten up, and we're gonna find out if we can actually portage. If we can live up to our uniforms. Ninety pounds. Ninety pounds. That was the standard Voyager pack, I think. Yeah, we might be over that. <laughs> With all this gear, not too bad. <clears throat> it looks compact, but it's quite heavy. What do you figure that bag is with the food? Uh, I don't know, it's like 30 something, I guess. 30? Yeah. No, it's more than 30. 40 mm. ish. <clears throat> 35 to 40, I'd say. So is my bag ish. Your bag's probably the same. 22. 22. Just kidding. <laughs> what is it? You, uh, got a, you, mine? Got an, you got an axe on the side, so it's got to be a bit. Might be getting close to 30. Yeah. Yeah. Then we got our camera gear, and then odds and sods, the paddles, net. It's going to be a little bit of work. Hey. You going to sing again? I don't know about that. No. Are you singing? No. Are we starting every day with a song? Every day. We only know one song. It's song time, children. <laughs> Gather around. Time to do some heavy paddling. We're going to throw some lines out, see if we can uh, catch a release of fish, because there's no way we're portaging trout to the next trout lake. That would be silly. So this is kind of an interesting shoreline. I guess it got burnt, I don't know. <laughs> Part of it's burnt anyway, but rocky. I'm trying to find the portage, so they've actually marked it with uh, trail mark tape here. So I guess there's gonna be some markings up this way here. That's the way we're headed. Uh, interesting shoreline here. Very open, not what I'm used to. Burnt too, it looks like. So we're loading off here and then we're going up over the hill. All right, so this is our first big portage. I'm out of uniform, as obviously by the hat, but it's getting way too hot to wear a toque, man. Thank you. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Should be good. On the next one, we might uh, narrow up these shoulder pads a bit. That's pretty heavy. Oh, this food bag's heavy, <laughs> for sure heavy. <sighs> heavy and awkward. Oh. Whew. All right. Eight hundred meters, which is roughly eight hundred steps. It was 
Here's gear up the hill over the bank. Oh. Oh, he has to pass all those blueberries. Not gonna be happy about that, is he? We just did our first run, uh, not so bad aside from getting turned around a little bit. I ended up uh, following what I thought was the watershed that way because at some point it goes off to the left here and you have to look for little rock piles as you get up. But there's flagging tape at the start here and then once you turn left you got to look for those little rock piles because there's nothing to flag on. So that was one thing and then on the way back we just ate some blueberries. And I noticed there's a lot of smoke coming in now too. Like even last night I started to smell it. <coughs> now I can smell smoke almost all the time from the forest fires. <coughs> and it's all charred up in here. So that's an older fire. But there's uh, nine active fires or something like that right now. And uh, we're getting closer to them. So we'll see how that goes as the week and trip goes on. So those are those little rock things you're looking for. Because open ground here, you can't really 100% tell where you're going. But one little rock thing, if you stand on it, you should be able to see the next rock thing. And so on. There's the other rock formation thing up here. We are a little awkward here. And how we carry stuff because you got camera gear and everything else, not ultralight stuff. Jerry's do some trail maintenance. <laughs> Kicking some branches out of the way. And this second bag here is too heavy too. But uh, for people who do this stuff regularly, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, as you get more experience and as you get older, I guess a little bit of both, you drop down the weight and then you start doing with less and less and that increases the enjoyment of the trip. So it might be something even to come back here and do nothing but rice as a survival challenge and just concentrate on the fishing and maybe have an exit point that we have to make it and uh, yeah just fish fish and eat fish it'll be funner than carrying crap around in my opinion anyway but uh, if you're just joining us tonight right now your the theme is early voyageurs and Curio de Bois and uh, that's what they would have done they would have been lugging furs around <laughs> from deep in the Canadian wilderness to trade and the courier de bois would skirt all the rules and laws they were the rogue tradesmen the entrepreneurs the ones that operated outside of the bounds of the law and they would not pay the taxes and all their profits were theirs and then there was the ones the voyageurs and they were licensed and they worked for the Hudson Bay Company and of course a portion of their money would go to the Hudson Bay Company. But then they probably would have had job security, they would have had better routes, you know, they wouldn't have to go super deep in the wilderness <coughs> because they weren't always hiding. So there were definitely advantages to that sort of stuff. A couple of logs to ball. jump over here. And uh, yeah, this is where everything kind of changes when we're in the, the regular part of the woods. It's a little bit more dense, but not super dense. 
This is probably new growth from the fire or just a spot that had been missed, but it looks like it's new stuff. Well, I hope that bag gets a little lighter. The food bag's pretty heavy. Uh, equipment bag's pretty heavy. Camera bag's pretty heavy. It's all pretty heavy. So next time, ultralight. And we got a short paddle through here and then we have another couple half size portages of this one. So we're still not there yet. 8.25 to Jigsaw and then 5.75 to an unnamed lake. Maybe we'll keep an eye out for some moose apparently. Yep. And then a 300. Oh, since our last trip we kind of reorganized things a little bit. And I feel a lot better about this portage leg than the last one. Only because the adrenaline kicks in and the endorphins kick in and that kind of takes care of the pain. You get used to not feeling pain when you're living in the city. Oh, your body has mechanisms to take care of all that sort of stuff. So my legs feel a little juicy. Not too bad. I figure this backpack on my back right now is about 40 pounds. I have a camera box in my other one hand and a paddle. Because Jamie was fine, it was a hard time carrying three paddles. You have your two main and a spare. Um, and the net. It's kind of awkward, they always want to roll out. So those could be tied to the canoe. A lot of guys will do that, they'll tie off to the canoe. Pretty spectacular here. I noticed that we're smelling a lot more of that wood smoke though. So something's definitely on fire still. I can see where we're gonna put in over here though. This is a relatively short portage. It's all over this rock. Um, yeah. It's going not too bad. But uh, it is a little bit of a chore so if you guys decide you want to come to Woodland Caribou Provincial Park, decide what you want to spend your time doing. If you want to be hauling your stuff around or you want to sit in a lake, Red Lake Outfitters will do whatever you want. You could camp out, carry all the gear you want, and sit on one lake the whole time and fish. And bring all your buddies all your buddies and just catch and cook fish and hang out and have fires and go swimming but uh, we decided we wanted to see a little bit of the park and do something that we wouldn't ordinarily do at least I wouldn't ordinarily do big carry carry trippy trippy so that's what we're doing now we're seeing a bit more of the park and uh Glad I did. Just want to make sure I get my fishing in. That's all. So we didn't fish much at Wrist Lake. We just kind of paddled through it. Didn't want to get hung up too much in the morning. So now, if we do things properly, we should get to our next lake. Be set up by noon and then be ready to fish for two nights. So that will be a big relax when you don't have to do the tear down in the morning and go anywhere. You have a whole day to do whatever you want. Could you do that again? I missed it. <laughs> Lost much work. <laughs> Not used to this yet. My legs don't feel too bad though. No. No. That's good. Probably just uh painkillers. <laughs> the natural painkillers. Alright, we're good. Another journey that way and then another 375 or 380? Something like that. Yeah. And then we're into our next lake. There's supposed to be a moose here. We were told there's <laughs> gonna be a moose there. today. So 
but we're not really fishing any any through here. We uh, Puzzle Lake had walleye apparently. Jigsaw Lake. Jigsaw, right? What did I say? Puzzle. Is there a puzzle lake in here? Uh, Jigsaw know, puzzle. Jigsaw is like a puzzle. That's true. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we didn't fish there because we didn't want to portage fish. We we fully expect to be able to catch some fish over at Haven. Um, but this lo looks like a pretty good lake. Looks like there might be something in it for sure. It's a uh, topography is all kind of the same. Very interesting to look at. It's like you would not think there'd be too many animals hiding. We just went over the list of all the different animals you might see, but bear and wolf. We've seen lots of wolf scat. Uh, not much sign of bear. Have you seen any bear sign? Nope. No. No. Uh, I saw a ripped open log. Ripped open log. Yeah. Yeah. Um, aside from that, we haven't really seen any big game. Still hoping to see a moose. There's a beaver lodge beside us. Yeah, and there's only a couple of beaver. Built of jack pine. <laughs> Yeah, you wonder what they're eating here. Not a whole lot for a beaver. Last leg of the day. Oh, there's lots of blueberries on the way. So we're stopping to pick a bunch of those. Uh, Jeremy said they tasted better than the other ones. Not sure why, but maybe it's because it burnt all through here. All the place berries, berries, berries. Uh, I saw some currants up here. Currants. And there's some bunch berries around here too. I'm gonna find you some bunch berries. There's some bunch berries. These are kind of small and pathetic. But that's okay because they taste like garbage anyway. And they're not very sweet. And they're very low calorie too. So if you don't want to get fat, eat those. If you do, concentrate on the blueberries. So the goal for today, the goal for now, goal for now is to catch lunch. So we're about five hours into this little leg here. We're at Haven Lake, full of Lakers, full of Lakers. And then there's a uh, constellation. Yeah? Adventure. Adventure. What am I getting mixed up? Constellation is up at Roid. Oh, right. So Haven and then there's Adventure. Adventure is the one you're supposed to go visit. You don't camp at it. You just day trip it from here. So uh, if we don't have any fish here and any luck here, but we should, we should, we should. But there's never any guarantees, right? All right, let's let's go catch a fish guaranteed. Guaranteed. Okay, five minutes in, we already got a fish. We're not even portage right there. Yeah, we're not even five minutes in. The question is, if it's a dirty pike, are we keeping it and eating it or letting it go? I hope it's a laker. Oh, the anticipation. Oh, I see it. What is it? Oh, it's a, it's a walleye. A walleye? What? Is a walleye in here? I think it's got everything in here. Oh. That's a nice walleye. That's an eater, right? Yeah. That's lunch. Here we go. We got lunch. Nice. Fish number two. Another five minutes, another fish. Oh, it's gonna fight a little bit. It's probably a pike. I'm gonna wait till it gets to the boat. It is... Another pickle? Uh, another walleye. You hooked it, right? In the perfect spot. <laughs> That one will be easier to do. That's a nice size one too. There, he already unhooked himself. 
Beauty, two in the boat. It's a good size walleye. Oh, pike. Is it a pike or walleye? I don't know, man. <laughs> it's, got, it's got some runs on it now. It might be a little laker. It's a laker pike? No, it's pike a pike. Or laker? Pike. Oh, perfect. You got a dirty pike. No. <laughs> I don't. It doesn't count. <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> then we didn't have to handle it. We didn't want that pike anyway, did we? Uh, not really. We could have ate it. We could have flayed it and wasted the walleye. You never would have known the difference. Probably. Oh yeah, for sure. Harlan said so slimy. Harlan said he'd pike, so yeah. Which, I, I have nothing against eating pike. No, we would have ate it. I just have something against handling them in a canoe that's full of all of our junk still. All right, all right. So I gotta get back in the water because we two walleyes good, but three, three or four would be good, better, gooder. Better gooder. All right, I got a fish. Get hold the camera at the same time. That one? Uh, I think, yeah. There, there you go. No, I don't have to put the camera away. Same pike, maybe. <laughs> oh, something with a little bit more weight, maybe. All right. We found a shoal out here, a walleye shoal. They see where those birds are sitting? I don't know, maybe you can't. But there's a little rock ledge where they're sitting. It's a pretty good spot for for walleye and structure and all that stuff. I didn't really realize this was a walleye lake, but I guess it has everything. We have to check. It's Haven Lake. I haven't had any problems catching fish, that's for sure. How's it going back there? Can do some commentary while uh, you reel it in or? Me or you? Or just want to just listen to the birds? Yeah, well, I don't know what they're so worked up about because they didn't seem to have eggs or young on that rock, but they sure wanted to make some squeaky little noises at us. Yeah, those birds were dive bombing us. Jerry's fighting it on 100 year old line. On what? 100 year old line. Yeah, this is vintage. It's green. I told Jerry, get new line. He says, yeah. He didn't put new line on though. I'm waiting for him to lose his $10 lure over some $10 line. I hope it happens. I really do. There's only nice. there's only one way to learn your lesson is to lose a ten dollar lure. <laughs> it's not even not, those aren't even that, the last pike was only like a foot long. <laughs> I've got my drag set cautiously <laughs> to maximize the time that I get out of this. Uh, oh, it's a big pike this time. We'll land it. We'll eat it. I hope it busts him off. <laughs> Is it a lake or a pike? Pike. It's a pike. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think it's too shallow for lakers here. Maybe. Oh, it's a big, big enough pike. Oh, Miss. Back here. Net guy. Got the net upside down. That's part of the problem. There. That's a good size. Yeah, big dirty pike. We got two walleye and a big dirty pike for lunch. I think that's probably good enough. Yeah. But we might still do some catch and release. Yeah. What I might do with this guy is tuck him in behind me. Well, you can do whatever you want with him. I'm not touching him. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> Just don't flip us over. All right, we got to go eat lunch now. No, we got to fish to lunch. Oh, this lure does not catch pike, Jerry. Another walleye. Oh yeah. But we don't have the net, so we gotta do a bass scoop here. Up and in. Alright, so we're on one of the spots. I think it's the mainland spot. Um I'm looking at as a campsite, but there's it's a I mean, it's not a bad spot, it's got a nice view and all that stuff. It's pretty much full sun, but there's the tent spots are just not good. Um, the campfire hadn't been used to too much like this is supposed to be a tent pad here it's not level and then there's the same one over there not level I mean you could probably make make go of it but uh, we're uh, we're not going to we're gonna, since we're gonna be here for two days we're gonna probably go check out another spot so we're just laying out we actually unpacked and didn't quite think about looking around first because they're actually just hungry so we decided the best thing to do would just be to do a, a shore lunch here. There's our mess of fish for paddling in. We got a pike, 
and the three walleye. It's been a long time since I filleted a fish. Nowadays, during a Willis Living Challenge, you would scale a fish. Uh, but today, since we are a crew of Dubois and we carried our supplies with us, namely um, fat, we have some lard and we want to deep fry it, I'm going to fillet it out. So that means we're not going to be keeping the skin at all. And this is how I was taught to clean fish from my dad. Um, it's not a whole lot different than any other way, but we're just going to go behind the gill plate and up. This is a brand new Groman knife, their fillet knife. So it should be awfully sharp. And then all I'm doing is laying it down. I'm going to find the spine here, back of the dorsal fin, and I'm going to follow that all the way back, not going down too, too deep. And then once you get to the second one, you can pop it through and you want to keep it on the same side and then run that all the way down, keeping nice and tight to the backbone. And then from there, all we're going to do is run on the inside here, just ticking alongside the ribs all the way down. And then if we didn't go close enough to the ribs, we can clean that part up. So around, and then we're going to follow the ribs, tick, 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 all the way down. We want to make sure we don't get into the rock at the back here. And then once you get past the ribs, there isn't too much there. You can kind of press down and pull. And that'll be half your butterfly. Um, we're going to fillet these out totally. So we have our one fillet. And then from there, all we're going to do is press down against the bottom of the skin. And then we can pull the skin toward us. This actually works better if the knife is not super duper sharp, which it is right now, because we don't want to cut through the skin at all here and then we're just going to push and run our thumb and finger up against it at the back all the way down and we are going to end up with a boneless skinless piece of meat but as you can see there's an awful lot of waste left in the fish which is edible and but not something that people traditionally ate right i mean traditionally they ate them but um, not in recent time. So as we know we could eat the skin and we could eat the brain and the eyeballs and all that good stuff in the brain um, and the stomach we could eat and the guts too. So but we're gonna do it traditionally. It's nice to have it every once in a while. It's like fish and chips. So we're gonna soak this in uh, maybe some cornmeal or something like that and deep fry it. it. Should be really good. So I've got a couple more to go and uh, we're gonna combine this with Jeremy's Pike He's up there cleaning it now and he's doing his take on cleaning. So you can go check him out at One Wild Crafter and you can find out what he did with his pike. My understanding is that they would have their tobacco and their fire starter in this tin and then when they took smoke breaks on the water, they would use the magnifying glass that's inside the lid to light a piece of char cloth or something and then they would light their smokes from that or their pipes. So I'm going to use the magnifying glass to light some tinder mushrooms that I have and I'm going to make a tinder bundle with uh, some materials that I previously gathered and we'll start a fire that way. So voyageurs were smart enough to know that they had to bring supplies with them. Jerry just told me that they used to call them pork eaters. Is that what it was? Pork eaters? Pork eaters because of all the salt pork they would eat. Yeah, because they would eat salt pork. So this is just straight up lard, which is animal fat. Um, of course, you go back further, it's bear fat, right? And Jer thinks we're just going to use the whole thing. So we have enough depth to deep fry everything. Um, I think that's probably right. There we go, and we can reuse this a bunch of different times to cook things, but that's the basic gist of it.
know what I'm excited about? Found rope. <laughs> I'm gonna give you all my old fishing line. <laughs> Maybe we should just have some fish now. Want to bite a fish? Yeah, sure do. Just mixing in some corn. Corn flour, musk flour? Yeah. Yeah. And that's gonna go into the pot. Maybe we should do bite-sized pieces. Yeah. Oh, you get all this done. We got um, little nuggets ready to go. They're probably hot as heck. Ooh, they are. That's good stuff. Modern good stuff, right? Whoa. Oh, very good. Fish nuggets, fresh caught, out of the lake. We link here, Boop Provincial Park. We're just waiting on the potatoes. All right, well, I think that turned out pretty good, man. Uh, yep. Is it hot? Yep. It is hot. Yep. That's a lot of hot chips and hot fish. <laughs> There's a lot of calories in there. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty weighty, eh? Yeah. There's pepper, pepper and salt. Salt's on everything. I don't know if we have to talk about how good this is going to taste because this is modern cooking. Everybody know what, knows what it tastes like. It's mouth-wateringly yeah. good. Yeah. Chip stand quality. Plus, plus the atmosphere is better here. Way better. Can't beat that view. That's good stuff. I haven't had a fry yet. Oh yeah? The fries are maybe not chip stand quality, but... No, need some ketchup. Mm -hmm. A little bit of ketchup. It's good though. Mm -hmm. Really good, the crispy ones are good. The brown mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. All right, we gotta go find we're going to eat up. I'm not going to go for a paddle and find an actual spot that we're going to camp at. This spot's way too sunny. Mm -hmm. It's not ideal. So we're going to go across the lake and have another look. So we're only on day two. Yeah. It's only day two. We have six more days to go. Check out Jeremy on uh, One Wild Crafter. Um, if you guys book a trip to Woodland Caribou, provincial park please let me know let harlan know at red lake outfitters let him know that this sponsorship is uh, helping his business out business out because he'll want to know that uh, when he puts us out here showing the potential that woodland caribou has i mean we paddle across the lake three walleye one pike lost another pike pretty much yeah. on purpose you can catch a shore lunch every day and we've already done three so far Mm -hmm. And we're not even super focused on just catch and cook stuff. We've been doing a bunch of other things too, mm -hmm. including filming. So yeah, if you're focused on eating fish and you want to catch lots of them, this is the place to be. So give Harlan a ring and let him know I sent you. And while I'm thanking everybody, uh, thanks to the Townsends for our outfits. They made our uh, shirts custom for us and the Saint Sueur mine is from uh, Silver Moccasin and Jeremy ordered his on eBay I think if you yeah. go to check out his channel he'll and you ask him he'll let you know where he got it from but um, his is a little bit different than mine it's um I think more hand weaving went into yours than mine but mm -hmm. this is good quality I am not complaining about it good job and they're comfy to wear very I, practical I never wore one before this trip but you can throw your axe in there we tied the canoe to shore because we didn't have a rope with us at the moment. Yeah, and they're obviously designed for function. I think probably 
to keep the mosquitoes from coming up. One size fits all kind of deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, some variation of sizes. And then in the winter, it keeps the draft from coming up, but you can wear it all year. And then you, and then when it gets hot, you roll them up. Yeah. And you got a short sleeve shirt. Yeah. And they're not too too hot for even super hot days. So. No, you can unbutton them pretty far down the front too, right? Right. It's like long, a farmer's sunburn. As long as there's no mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Now, knock on wood, the mosquitoes have not been bad this trip. No. We're only 20... Six hours in, but <laughs> yeah. So you guys can subscribe or not. I don't care. We're out. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Yeah, I don't care if you subscribe to me either. Yeah, because subscribe to him. <laughs>